welcome to Learn Create Sew. Today we're making another fun plush project. For today's project, we're going to be making this cute little llama. This project is wonderful for holidays as well as for gifts. It's super cute for Valentine's Day, which is coming up real quick here. This little llama has a cute little blanket that has pockets. And so inside these pockets, you can put little Valentines. So you can go ahead and make a Valentine's Day themed llama just like this one, or you can change it different colors and different patterns for different holidays. This little llama would be great for Christmas, birthdays, even Halloween. You can change the whole feel of the llama by changing the colors and the style of the fabric. You can also make the llama out of neutrals, including the ears and the little tail, and then change the blanket with holidays and seasons. This pattern is available in two different sizes. The smaller llama measures approximately nine inches tall without the ears, and the larger llama measures about 11 and a half to 12. This is a quick fun project, and I absolutely love how they turned out. So let's go ahead and start making our project. For this project, you're going to want some fur or fleece fabric for the body of the llama. I'm using a nice swirl fur today. Uh, I like to choose this fabric because it's really affordable and easy to work with compared to a lot of other fur fabrics. I also have some cotton, which I'll be using for the blanket, as well as accents on the ears and the tail. I have a small cut of fleece that I'll be using for the face, as well as some scrap felt and yarn and some assorted wood beads that I'll be using for the necklace. You can really use whatever you like for the necklace. You can be creative. You also want some safety eyes. For the smaller llama, I use eight millimeter eyes and for the larger size, I use 10 millimeter. You're also gonna want some polyfill stuffing. For the exact sizing on cutting pieces, you can refer to the cut layout that's available with the free pattern on my website. I'm going to begin by preparing the fur fabric that I'll use for the body of the llama. I'm making the larger size llama today, so my fabric has been cut to a size of 14 by 22 inches. I'm going to lay this out in a single layer and I'm going to place it right side down. If you take a look at the cut layout, you can see that when we place the llama on our fabric, we want it to be a mirror image. So we're going to do one with the pattern facing right side down and one with the pattern facing right side up. This will ensure that we have a front and a back to the llama. It's also nice to cut it in a single layer because we can be more exact that way. Again, you can find the free pattern at my website. When I begin, I like to double check to make sure I have plenty of fabric. So here's one, and then I'm gonna have a finger space in between. And there's the other, and it looks like it fits good right there. So I'm ready to begin. I'm gonna flip it back, and I'm gonna start by tracing my pattern. I like to simply use a Sharpie to trace. You can use um, a fabric marking tool if you prefer, but for fur, it works really well for me to do a Sharpie. So I'm gonna trace around the outside with my Sharpie, and I'm also gonna put marks to indicate uh, the placement of the tail and ears, which are indicated on the pattern with little arrows, as well as where I'm going to leave my opening so that that information is there for me when I start sewing my llama. So let's trace this. And now I'm gonna extend those marks down. I'm gonna be really careful to make sure they don't go too far down. I don't want them to go beyond my seam allowance, which is a quarter of an inch, because I don't wanna see this on my final project. Also, when you use the Sharpie, uh, make sure that there's nothing underneath of your fabric that could accidentally get marked up. You don't want the Sharpie to accidentally bleed through.
Now that I've traced out the llama body pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this out on the line, and I'm gonna save this piece of fabric here for when I do the ears and the tails. I'm not gonna cut them out right now because I found with working with such small pieces with fur, especially on the small version of the llama, it's really nice to sew first and cut second. So we'll work on those just a little bit later, but um, hold on to this section of fabric for that purpose. So I'm gonna cut these out, and I found that the pile on this swirl fur is short enough that I can just cut the fabric regularly. If your fur fabric has a longer pile, you may want to take care to make sure that you cut the backing of the fabric only. But I'm gonna continue and cut out these two pieces, and then I'll join you back in just a second. I finished cutting and I now have both sides of the llama body as well as the top section saved for the ears. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside so they have that ready for me when I'm ready to do the ears and tail. And then I'm also gonna set these aside for a moment. Now you probably noticed uh, when you work with fur, it can be quite messy. We get just fur all over the place. So whenever I'm working with fur fabric, I like to have a duster or lint roller or something handy um, along with a garbage can close by because uh, it does get quite messy and you just want to be prepared for that. Uh, otherwise it can end up all over the place. Next I'm going to cut the fabric for the face. You can use fleece or felt for this. When you cut this fabric, you want to make sure that you trace the shape onto the back side of the fabric. You don't want to see any tracing lines on your final project. And because of that, I'm not going to use a Sharpie for this one. I'm going to use an air erase marker because I just want to make super, super sure that I'm not going to see it on the outside of my project. If you don't have a marking tool such as an air erase marker, uh, you can simply use weights and cut around the pattern piece and that's fine too. Or just make sure that you use a coordinating color. And again, make sure your tracing lines are on the back side of the fabric. You also want to be super exact when cutting this piece because the edges will be visible on the outside of your llama. So be super careful and cut it as precise as you can. With fleece, this can be a little tricky because it stretches, so just take your time and go slowly. Next, let's prepare the cotton fabric for the blanket. For the cotton fabric, since it's so thin, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this fabric when I cut. So I'm gonna take my fabric piece and I'm going to fold it in half with right sides touching. And I need two of the blanket pieces and two of the pocket pieces. So again, I'm going to trace these and cut them out and then I'll come right back. The last piece that I need to cut out separately is the heart for the necklace. Now this is optional, you don't have to have this if you don't want to, but I kind of like it for the Valentine's Day llama. I'm just gonna place this on a piece of scrap felt and again, I'm going to trace it onto the wrong side of my fabric. I'm using a wet erase marker here. Um, I would use the air erase marker except for due to the color of my fabric, you wouldn't be able to see it. So my wet erase marker is blue, so I'm using that one here since it will show up a little better. And again, just like with the face of the llama, you want to be really careful and exact when you're cutting this out because you will see the edges on your final project. So just take your time and go slow. And the 
card is ready. I'll go ahead and set this aside and save it for later. Now I want to transfer the key markings from the face pattern to my fabric. Here's how I like to do that. I'm going to take a push pin and I'm going to poke a hole in the pattern at key points. For example, at each of the ends on the nose and mouth, at each of the ends of the eyelashes, and the eyelashes are optional so you don't have to do that if you don't want to, as well as in the center of the eye. I like to use a push pin because it's just a little bit wider than a regular pin and makes a pretty good sized hole. And I am going to take care to be as exact as I can because uh, this will help determine the position of the face on my plush and I do want that to be pretty specific. Okay, now that I have holes in the pattern, I'm going to take my pattern piece and I'm going to lay it on top of the right side of my fabric and I'm going to make sure it's aligned really carefully. And then I'm going to use my air erase marker and mark those key points. Um, if you don't have an air erase marker, you just want to be careful of what you choose. I don't want my marks to be visible on the final plush, so that's why I like the air erase marker so much. But uh, if you choose to use something else, just keep your marks really small um, and light if possible. Okay, and once I've marked all those points, I'm going to take care to make sure that I can see them clearly on my fabric. And I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch these decorations. Uh, you can also sew this by hand if you prefer to use black embroidery floss and use a back stitch to um, add these details, that's totally fine and that works great. I like to do this on the sewing machine. So I'm going to make sure that I have black thread in my sewing machine and I'm also going to make sure that I leave my thread tails long. So instead of back stitching, because I don't want to see that bulky overlay of thread. Instead of doing that, I'm going to leave my thread tails long and hide them at the end. But here's how I'm going to sew. So I'm going to start with the mouth and nose and I'm going to start by placing my needle down exactly on this bottom point where the bottom of the mouth and nose section would be. And then I'm going to travel up to the center and over to one side of the Y. And then I'm going to turn my fabric around and go back to the center, turn and go up down the other side of the Y, back down to the center, and then back down to my starting point. When I do this, I will have stitched over each section twice. And when I do this to make sure that it lays really nicely on top of each other, I like to count my stitches. So for example, if it takes me one, two, three, four, five stitches to get between these two points, I'm going to remember that so that when I turn around and go back, I'll have the same number of stitches there. So let's head to the sewing machine and do that section. So I'm ready to begin sewing and I'm going to hold my thread tails and place the needle down exactly on that first point. And then I'm going to count the stitches it takes to get up to the center of the Y. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to turn and I'm going to head towards the other side of the Y. One, two, three, four, five. And it looks like I can probably go one more, six. And now I'm going to lift up the foot and turn around and travel exactly back on that same line. And that took me six stitches. So I'm going to do six stitches back. One, 
two, three, four, five, six. And now, and now I'm gonna turn my fabric and head up to the other point on the Y. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm gonna turn and head back with again six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now I'm gonna turn my fabric and the bottom one was five, so I'm gonna head down five. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to lift up my needle and keep my thread tails long. Okay, I've now sewn that on the machine, so I'm going to hide the thread tails. I'm going to pull them to the back. So I'm going to take a needle, just a regular hand sewing needle, and I'm going to insert it into the fabric, front to back, right at the bottom of where I started. And then I'm not going to push it all the way through. I'm going to keep it up just a little bit, and I'm going to take my thread tail that is on the front of the face, and I'm going to thread it through the eye of the needle. And then I'm going to pull it through. And now all the thread tails are on the back, and I'm going to tie them in a knot. And the front section with the nose is complete. Next, I'm gonna stitch the eyelashes in a very similar manner. I'm gonna start at the center of the eye and I'm going to head to one eyelash and I'm gonna count my stitches and turn back to the center and then head to the other eyelash and count my stitches and back to the center and turn to the other eyelash, count my stitches and go back to the center. And again, I'm gonna leave my thread tails long and pull them to the back when I'm finished. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same on both sides. Now that the face is complete, I'm ready to apply it to the body. You can choose which side of the plush that you'd like to place the llama face on. So if you want your plush to be facing the other direction, you can use the other piece and place the face here. I'm gonna do mine the same direction as the pattern. So I'm using this piece of fur right here. You wanna make sure that the body piece is laying right side up so you're looking at the furry side. and I'm going to place the face on top of the fur fabric. Uh, to do this, you do want to make sure it's pretty straight. One option is to cut out the circular face placement guide here on your pattern, and then you can lay it on top of your fabric and put your face piece right there, and that will help you make sure it's aligned uh, very carefully. The other way is simply to measure. So the face on this large one is two and one eighth inch from the top. So I would place the face two and one eighth inches from the top here. You do want to make sure that it's straight and you want to make sure that it's centered. So if you have a hard time doing that, I would recommend cutting out the placement guide from the pattern piece and using that to help you position the face on the fabric. And I'm gonna double check my measurement one more time. There we go. And I'm gonna pin that in place. 
I'm going to use some fine point pins here and I'm going to be pinning in the center where it's out of the path of the seam allowance so that I can leave these pins in the whole time I'm sewing. And I do want to be really careful, since I'm working with fur fabric, things can shift. So after I put these pins in, I'm going to check to make sure it didn't change position. So I'm glad I checked. It looks like mine slid a little bit to the left there. So I'm going to adjust it a bit. And let's double check again. So now the face is pinned in place and that actually took me a couple tries. I found every time that I pinned the face to the body, it would slide to the left. So I ended up putting it a little too far to the right on purpose so that after I pinned it in place, it was exactly where I wanted. But you do want to make sure that it's going the correct direction so that your llama is not crooked in the end. So now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to make sure that we have coordinating thread so we don't want the black thread anymore. This time I'm I'm going to make sure I have white thread in my sewing machine because it matches my fabric. And I'm going to sew all the way around the face again. And if you don't want to see your back stitching, you can do what you did with the accents on the face is just leave your thread tails long and then pull them to back in the end, but if that doesn't bother you, you can go ahead and backstitch. When I do backstitch, I like to have the backstitch here at the bottom center. Um, when I stitch around this oval, I'm going to use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to go really slow and stop frequently because I want to make sure I keep that consistent because again, it will be visible on the outside of my plush. The face is now attached to the plush body. I actually ended up using more like a 16th inch seam allowance, which works as well, but it is a little bit harder to make it consistent when it's that small. For the next step, I'm going to add the safety eyes. I like to use my seam ripper to do this step, but you can also use an awl if you have one. To insert the safety eyes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke a hole right next to the start of my eyelash stitches. So right at that center mark was the center of the eye. Now I don't want to actually cut the threads there, but I'm going to come just to the side of it super, super close. So you can see I'm right up next there. And I'm going to poke the tip of my seam ripper through both layers of fabric. And then I'm going to push my seam ripper back so that the little blade that's at the bottom here is up next to the fabric and I'm going to push it just a little bit upwards. Now I'm not going to push it hardly at all. It's super, 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 super tiny because this fabric stretches. So you really only need to cut a couple of threads and then I'm going to push the safety eye through. And you can see on the back there where the thread was cut. And I'm just going to wiggle that. And I find it's helpful just to be patient and go slow and it will eventually work itself out. And once it's gone through, I'll add the back to the safety eye. And so the key when you're doing this is when you cut that fabric is to be super, super, super careful because uh, you don't want the hole for the eye to be too big. If it's too big, then the eye could fall out. So again, I'm going to do that one more time. And I'm going to poke the tip of my seam ripper right next to those stitches and then I'm going to go up just a smidge, just a couple threads. And if you have a hard time uh, getting it to cut through both layers, 
of fabric, you can do one at a time. And then I'm going to insert the safety eye through the hole. And it looks like this time it cut the fleece, but not the fur. So I'm going to poke my seam ripper in again. And I'm going to take note on the back where the tip of my seam ripper is poking out. And right there, I'm just going to cut one thread. And I'll push the safety eye through the fleece. And you can see that just one thread is plenty to snip on the fur fabric. It just stretches right on over. Now the eyes are attached. And the face is almost done. I'm going to add some blush. When you add the blush to the llama, you want to be careful because this is something that can't be undone. And so you want to take care on the placement. I like to place the blush just to the side and bottom of the eyes. You can practice this on your scrap fabric to get a feel for how the blush applies to your fabric. I'm just using regular old makeup here, uh, but you can use chalk pastels if you prefer. And it looks a lot brighter on my llama than it does on the camera, so that's good for me, but you just want to put as much as you like. And the face of the llama is complete, so the next thing we're going to do is prepare the tail and the ear. So let's grab the extra fabric that we were saving for that process. There are several different ways you could cut out the ears and the tail, but this is the way I really like to do it. Uh, you could cut out the pieces on the solid lines and then sew them together just like we will do for the body of the llama. But I find that when the pieces are small, lining up the edges with the fur can be quite a challenge and I don't want to have to deal with that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to trace the stitch line. So you can see the dotted line on these pieces, that's where we're going to be sewing. And so I'm going to trim the pattern piece for the tail to the dotted line. And then I'm going to do the same for one of the ear pieces. The way you can see the ear pieces right now, uh, you see the left and right back to back. This is what it would look like uh, on the cut layout. I'm just going to cut one pattern piece here on the center dotted line so that I can trace it. And I'll set these aside. So I have one ear piece and one tail piece trimmed to the dotted line on the pattern. And then I'm going to take my fur fabric and make sure you take note of the direction of the stretch. So this is the stretch going this way. I'm going to lay it nice and flat. And then I'm going to take the cotton piece as well. The first thing I'm going to do is trace my pattern pieces onto the fabric. I want to make sure I leave at least a half an inch in between each piece, so I like to just use my thumb. I also want to make sure it stays a bit away from the edge of the fabric, so I'm going to trace the tail. And then I'm going to trace the ear, keeping them a good distance from the edge and each other. And then because I want a left ear and a right ear, I'm going to flip this pattern piece over and make a mirror image. These lines that I've traced here will be the sew lines. So uh, don't cut your fabric there, that will be where we're stitching. So now that my pattern is traced, I'm going to lay the cotton fabric right side down on top of the fur fabric. So 
the right side of the cotton is touching the right side of the fur. And I'm gonna pin this in place. I'm not gonna pin actually where I'm gonna sew, but I'm gonna pin around. And you can also pin in the center, but make sure your pins are out of the path of the seam allowance because I want these pins to stay in while I'm sewing. Now when I sew, the lines are kind of hard to see on camera, but when I sew, I'm gonna leave the bottom of the shape open because that's where I'm gonna turn. So here's the base of the ear, the base of the ear, the base of the tail. I'm not gonna sew right there, but I am gonna sew along the top and sides. So I'm gonna start here, sew exactly on the line up and around leaving the bottom open. And then I'm gonna do the same on the ears. I'm gonna sew up, over, and down leaving the bottom open. So up, over, and down leaving the bottom open. And I'm gonna use a 2.5 stitch length and I'm gonna make sure I backstitch. I've stitched on all the lines, and now I'm ready to cut. I'm gonna cut the bottom of the ears and tails exactly on the line, and I'm gonna take care not to cut my stitches. Along the sides and top, I'm gonna to cut with an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. If you sewed normally, cutting out the pieces first and then sewing, you'll want to trim your seam allowances to an eighth of an inch after you've sewn. So I now have the two ears and the tail cut out. And I find that's way easier than cutting it first and trying to keep it together. So the next thing I'm gonna do is turn these pieces right side out. I like to use a small pair of hemostats to grip inside and turn it. If you don't have hemostats, uh, tweezers work pretty good as well. Uh, but it can be kind of tricky turning this without them. Just gonna slide my hemostats down to the bottom and grip the end, and then very carefully slide it over. And then I'm gonna use the hemostats again to poke inside there and make sure it's fully turned out. So there's one little ear. And the tail. To prepare the tail piece, fold it in half with the cotton sides touching. And we're gonna sew this along the bottom edge, the one that has the raw edges, with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And that will hold our tail in place and give it that cute little shape. Let's go ahead and place the ears and tail on the body. If you recall, on the pattern piece, there were several guides to show you where those are placed. This was the placement of the tail, and the ears, and you should have transferred the markings onto the fabric. For the tail, you want the side that we stitched to go along the raw edge, and you want the cotton to be facing outward. So make sure it's still folded in half. You want the cotton facing this way, and that mark that we made will line up the position of the tail. You do want to make sure that it's not too close to the edge because we don't want it to get caught in our seam allowance later. But line up the raw edge of the tail with the raw edge of the body. And it's super tiny. I'm gonna line it up with my mark and pin it in place. And make sure that the fabric backing is aligned and not just the fur fluff. 
I also like to make sure that the tail is going straight down so that it is completely vertical, that folded edge, and that will help me make sure that my tail is going the direction I want it later. Now I'm going to apply the ears. Uh, for the ears, there are two marks there. Those marks indicate the gap in between the ears. So I'm going to put one ear to the right and one ear to the left of those marks. The ear pieces, the tall pieces go towards the center. So the longest edge is in the center and then they point outwards. So the ears will be like this on the top of the llama. So when I place them on top, I'm going to place them right side down, so the cotton side down, straight long edges towards the center, and I'm going to leave in between those marks the gap. So I'm going to place this one just to the right of my mark, and again, make sure that straight edge is vertical. Make sure the raw edges are aligned and pin it in place. And then do the same on the other. Make sure that straight long edge is vertical. Line up the raw edge with the edge and make sure it's just to the left of your mark. And pin in place. Because the fur fabric does tend to shift a lot when sewing, we're now going to baste these in place. So both the tail and the ears, we're going to baste in place with about um, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We want it to stay less than a quarter inch if we can because we don't want to see those stitches on our final project. But we're going to baste the tail and the ears in place so that they don't shift on us while we're sewing later. Double check to make sure your stitches went through all layers and then we're ready to attach the rest of the body. So lay the piece that we've just put together right side up and then grab the other body piece and place it right side down on top of it. And now we're gonna pin around all the edges. When I'm pinning fur fabric together, I like to use pin basting. This is a method where you weave the pin in and out of the fabric, um, and this just is a little bit more secure than the perpendicular pins. However, when you use pin basting, you do wanna keep an eye on the direction you place your pin so that it's easy to move later. When I begin sewing, I'm gonna start here and go around. So on this path that I travel around my llama, I'm gonna make sure that the point of the pin is always pointing to my start. So I'm gonna pin all the way around the edges, weaving my pins in to make this really secure and in place. And again, I'm gonna make sure that the point of the pins is always going to my start along the path. Now that my pin basting's done, I'm gonna sew along the edges of the llama with a quarter inch seam allowance, and I'm going to leave this back section here open. It's really important to make sure that the section you leave open is not on a curve, um, because that makes it a lot harder to close later. So I'm gonna start here, sew all the way around, and stop here, leaving this open to turn the plush. And again, we're using a quarter inch seam allowance. And as 
as with sewing the face, if you find that your fabric is bunching or sliding, you can use a walking foot to help you keep the layers together. When I'm sewing with pin basting, I like to hold the ball of the pin. That way I can prevent it from being in the path of my needle, but keep the pin in place for as long as possible. Now that the sewing is complete, we're ready to turn. Since our fabric is stretchy, we don't have to worry about clipping the curves too much. However, if you used a fabric that does not stretch, such as cotton or flannel, you will want to make sure you clip all of the curves. Since this fabric stretches really well, uh, I'm not gonna clip everywhere. I'm just going to clip some key points. I'm gonna clip right here at the bend of the neck, as well as right here in between the legs and I'm going to be really careful to make sure that I don't cut my stitches. Now I'm going to turn the llama right side out. Check to make sure everything's okay and that the tails and ears are straight and not caught in the seam allowance. And now we're ready to stuff, so let's grab some polyfill. When you stuff your llama, be sure to fluff the polyfill. You don't want it to be clumpy, so before you place it in the llama, rip it into small pieces, and that will help make it light and fluffy without so many clumps. I'm almost finished stuffing the llama, and now I'm gonna start closing up the opening. I'm gonna use a slip stitch and a hand needle and thread to close up this opening here. I'm gonna sew about halfway up, then stuff a little more, and then continue sewing it closed. If you need instruction on how to do a slip stitch, refer to the link in the description below for another video that will show you how to slip stitch. It can be a bit of a challenge slip stitching through all of the fur, so just take your time, be careful, try to maintain that seam allowance. And make sure that you're sewing through the back of the fabric and not just the fluff. When you're sewing with fur, oftentimes what happens is the little fibers on the fur get caught in the seam allowance. It's a bit difficult to see on the white fabric, but if you look close, you'll notice that little fibers of the hairs are trapped in the seams. To help get those loose, uh, I like to run the side of a pin, my fingernail, or in this case, the side of my purple thing along the edge of the seam, and it will help free up those little fur fibers. This will help to hide the seam on your plush and give it a more finished look. So go ahead and do that along all of the seams. Uh, you may notice that you have to do this a little bit more carefully on these small items, such as the ears and the tail, where they're really stuck in there. If they don't uh, come loose when you rub up against them, you can get a straight pin and gently tug them out of the seam allowance to help them come free. And this will just improve the overall look 
of your plush, make it a little fuzzier and super cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue this around all of the seam edges of my plush to help give it a more finished look. I'm also going to trim any threads that I find as I do this. So I've got one little guy sticking up right here. I'm gonna make sure that gets trimmed off as well. And I'll meet you back in a minute. The llama's now finished. Isn't she super cute? And now we just need to work on the blanket. To begin the blanket, you're gonna want the two blanket pieces of fabric, as well as the two pocket pieces and your elastic. For the larger llama, I use about four and a quarter inches of elastic, while for the smaller llama, I use about three and a quarter to three and a half. Let's begin by preparing the pockets. We'll need to head to the ironing board. First, take one of your pocket pieces and fold it in half with the wrong sides touching. So you should be looking at the pretty side of the fabric, and then press. And now do the same for the other piece. Lay one of the blanket pieces right side up. This will be the piece that you see on the front of the llama. Then place one of the folded pocket pieces along one edge. And pin it in place. And then do the same for the other side. Take the other side of the blanket and your second pocket piece and place it right side up on the edge of the blanket. Next, we're gonna baste the pockets in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna begin here and sew along the sides and bottom. You don't wanna sew along this interior edge because that's where the opening for the pocket will be. So just along the side and bottom, side, and bottom like a U. These two interior folds will stay open. So let's head to the sewing machine and baste it in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You should now have two pockets on the blanket. Place the blanket piece right side up and grab the elastic. Align one end of the elastic with one of the short sides. You want the elastic to be in the center and you want the raw edge of the elastic to align with that end. And pin or clip it in place. Eventually, our elastic will connect all the way on this side, but I found it's a little bit easier to sew if you only attach one side to begin with. So we're gonna start by basting this elastic in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Apart from this end right here, make sure the rest of the elastic is out of the path of the seam allowance. You want it in the center and away from all the edges of the blanket. Then take the second blanket piece and lay it right side down on top of the first. Pin in place. We're now gonna stitch around the edge of the blanket. We're gonna be using a quarter inch seam allowance, but we need to leave a section to turn. I'm gonna start at this pin here, sew around the edges with a quarter inch seam allowance, and stop here. When I get to the section that has the elastic, I'm gonna back stitch over that section to make sure it's nice and strong. So I'm gonna sew down here, back stitch, turn, come down, around. When I get to this end right here, I'm gonna stop sewing for just a second and I'm gonna grab the elastic that's inside and align it with this edge. And then I'm gonna sew over that end of the elastic as well and back stitch to keep it nice and tight and then continue sewing to the second pin. After you pull the elastic tight, the fabric will scrunch up a bit um, and so you just have to be careful to make sure to keep it flat as you sew and I'll demonstrate that when I'm at the machine. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. 
Okay, now that I'm at the last short side, I need the elastic. So I'm gonna take out this pin here and I might need to take out this pin as well and I'm gonna search for the end of the elastic. I'm gonna make sure that I keep this elastic straight, but I'm gonna pull it so that it reaches the other end. And I wanna make sure it's centered just like before. And I'm gonna kinda of hold it in place with my finger. If you need to, you can add um, a pin here to hold it in place. But I find if I just hold it with this finger here in place from the other side, it tends to work really well. And so now I have that sandwiched in between and I'm gonna continue sewing. And I can feel that my machine just went over the elastic, so I'm gonna back stitch again and then go forward to make that strong. And then I'm gonna continue sewing. And you'll notice now that my fabric's all scrunched up, so I'm gonna to have to pull gently to straighten it out. And remember, I'm not gonna sew all the way closed. I have to leave my opening, so I'm gonna start uh, so I'm gonna stop before it closes all the way. The blanket looks really funny right now since the elastic is trapped inside and so we need to prepare the blanket to turn. So I'm first going to trim the corners. So I'm just going to cut off some of this excess bulk so that there's not so much fabric in the corner when I turn. I'm going to do that for all four corners. Take care not to cut your stitches and not to get too close. You don't want to accidentally end up with a hole in the blanket. Next, I also need to clip the curve section. So I'm going to trim the fabric at the pointy corners. And then I'm gonna cut a few little V's along the curve. And this will help it to lay flatter up against the llama. Now that everything's trimmed, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it right side out. Now when you turn with the pockets, things can get a little twisted. So you want to make sure that when you turn, the pockets end up on the opposite side from the elastic. So the pockets are going to be on the front of the blanket and the elastic will be on the back of the blanket. If it's not like that, go ahead and flip it back because sometimes the pockets end up on the wrong side. You do want to make sure it gets fully turned, so you may want to use a corner turner or some type of turning tool to help poke those corners out. I'm going to be using my purple thing here, but I just want to make sure that these are fully turned because the blanket will look a lot better in the end if you do that. Okay, I'm now going to press the blanket flat. This can be a little tricky uh, to do to make sure that we don't accidentally melt the elastic. So take your time, use the point of your iron. If you have a pressing tool such as a pressing ham or um, a sleeve roll, those can be really helpful when ironing something small like this. So I'm gonna grab my sleeve roll and just place the blanket around the outside and then use this to press. And I'm gonna be really careful to make sure that I don't press that elastic. And again, if you don't have a sleeve roll or a pressing ham, you can just use your regular ironing board, just use the tip of your iron and take your time. You do wanna make sure that that opening is tucked in so the opening that you left for turning, it should appear as if it's been sewn. Now that the blanket's been pressed, I'm gonna to top stitch all the way around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. 
I find that when I do this, it's a little bit easier if I have the elastic on the top like this. And that way I can lay the blanket flat and sew around the edges and then move this as needed. And you will have to stop frequently to move uh, things out of the way because uh, it is a little awkward sewing this shape. I've finished the top stitching along the edge of the blanket and now I'm going to press one more time. This will help set my stitches as well as make sure that it stays nice and flat. And now we can put the blanket on our llama. Make sure that the curved end of the blanket points towards the neck and you want the pockets to be on the outside. Our llama has her blanket and the last thing that we need is a necklace. You can construct the necklace for the llama however you like. You can use ribbon, you can use beads, you can use embroidery floss. Um, I don't have many skills in this area so I'm just going to be using some yarn that I'm going to braid with some little beads into it. So usually what I do is I just tie this end onto something and then start braiding. I'll go ahead and get that set up and come right back. I normally tie my yarn to the edge of my sewing table, but since that wasn't visible on camera, I've actually tied it to a little weight today. I've tied it loosely so I can untie it later, and then I'm simply going to braid with these three colors. I'm using about a yard of yarn here in each color. Okay, I have braided 24 times and I'm gonna keep track because I want the beads to be evenly spaced. And so now I'm going to place uh, the first bead on one of the strands of yarn. And I'm gonna put a little clip on that while I go get my needle threader. Depending on how wide the opening is in your beads, you may or may not need this, but I found that the little I found the little wire needle threaders work pretty good. So I'm just going to slide that through my bead. And pull it through. and then I'm gonna continue braiding. And I'm gonna count again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then I'm going to add another bead One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. If you have someone to help you with this step, it is handy to have someone else thread the beads onto the yarn as you braid. For the third bead here, I'm going to put six beads on my necklace. So in between these two, I braided 12. In between this one, I'm gonna place the heart in the middle. So I'm actually going to braid 24 here and that will be the center of my necklace. 
and I'm going to continue braiding to create the rest of the necklace. I'm putting another bead like this, and then 12, a bead like this, and then 12, and a bead like this, and then I'll do 24 to end. And this is for the large llama. When I did the small llama, I only braided 12 at the beginning. But aside from that, everything else was the same. So I'm going to finish this up and then come back. I finished up the end of the necklace and I've tied it in a knot. And so now I'm going to go ahead and remove the ends of the yarn from the weight. So I'm just going to carefully untie this. And I'm going to pinch the top so I don't lose the braiding there. Okay, and now I have my necklace. It looks like it's a little off balance here. These braids must have been a little bigger, but it's pretty close. And so when I tie my knot at the end, I'll keep that in mind. I can also, if I want, undo this knot and bring it down a little bit. I think I might do that. So I'll fix this up. I'm just going to untie this knot and undo a few braids, make these the same length, and I'll come back. I've adjusted the ends of the necklace so that they're the same length and now I'm going to add the heart. I've got a large yarn needle here that I'm going to thread with a piece of red yarn. And then I'm going to slide this through the front of the heart at the center about a quarter inch or so from the top. Then I'm going to make sure the needle is at the front of the heart. So whichever side you want to be the right side. So I'm going to thread this one more time using the yarn that's in the front. And then you can either simply loop it around the front of the necklace or actually go through a chain. I don't want this heart to come off. So I'm going to go in the center here in between some of these pieces of yarn right in the middle. Looks like right here is pretty good. And I'm just going to thread the needle through the yarn there. And now I can remove my needle. And you want to decide how far down you want the heart to dangle. You can let it dangle quite a bit. You can pull it up pretty close. I find I prefer mine pretty close to the, the necklace. So once I have it where I like it, I'm going to turn it to the back. And I'm simply going to tie a knot. You could probably also uh, glue this if you don't want to just knot it. But I'm going to knot it close to the back of the heart so that it will hide my knot there. And then I'm going to trim it off and turn it right side over. And now I'm going to place the necklace on my llama. Simply place the necklace on the llama where you like it and decide how far down you want it to go. And you can hold it on the back and play with it until you find the placement that you like best. And then tie it together on the back. And we have our necklace. I really love the braided look of the necklace on the llama. One last fun piece for this llama. This is probably my favorite part of the project, is with our llama, it has cute little pockets that we can place Valentine's in. So you can print off the free template on my website, which is with the pattern, and you can make yourself your own Valentine. So you can just fold this in half and color it if you like. There are also some that have color if you prefer to print it with a color printer. And then write your message inside and you can slip it right in the pocket. And so this cute little llama will deliver your valentines for you. 
You can also put little treats, goodies, and gifts in the other pocket. I hope you've enjoyed this project today. Until next time, happy sewing.